here um, and talk a little bit about my uh, thesis. Um, so um, you already heard by uh, Veronica that there are very different kinds of organizational formats uh, for networks. And um, it's absolutely the same if you look at new professionals, groups, and networks, communities. Um, on the right side, you see a screenshot from our website where um, we, as the new professional special interest group, um, try to build a list of all existing groups for and by new professionals and librarians. It's just a snapshot, you don't have to see that or list that, read through that, um, just to show you that there are a lot of different groups that are, that are already existing. And um, there are lots of different dimensions regarding the organization or the structure. Um, you, will have, you will find groups with structure, they have posts, official officers. Um, then you have uh, other groups that are completely informal. Um, there can be on-site groups that more uh, meet during conferences and events, but also groups that are completely online. Um, Another dimension is the um, proximity to a library association. So there are groups like our group that are part of a library association. Um, some are all only affiliated with a um, library association, they're close to them. And others are formed completely independently. And what I did in my research was um, I asked, I took as a research object new professionals groups in national library associations because that's uh, um, nice uh, close uh, circle of, of uh, objects and I was very interested to take a look at how are these groups organizing themselves and how how's the structure and how how is their practice that's the first and main uh, main question for my research and then I also asked um, are there any challenges maybe um, that these groups are facing and what are the possible solutions that they come up with to cope with these challenges because um, new professionals are very specific or very unique kind of people um, because they have a unique approach to using technology in their daily life and to organize themselves, they connect with each other in very special ways in comparison to former new professionals' generation. And I took, at, at, take a look, took a look at um, different areas of their work, uh, which you can see on the right side, which involve mission and goals, the structure of the group, um, the management activities of the groups and so on. <coughs> and um, in the middle you see the five different um, library associations that these groups were a part of. So it's a very broad um, uh, variety from Australia to Latvia. And here are just some outcomes. This was a thesis, a master's thesis, so I could talk about that the whole day. But I just want to highlight some things for you. Um, some details first. Um, it turned out that there were only very few practices that were shared by all of these groups. Like, um, for example, the uh, themes um, in their mission and states, uh, mission and goal statements. Um, all of these groups um, wanted to help new professionals to get involved in the profession, to connect with each other, to get closer to the library association, and so somehow being an entrance point for them. And then also, very interesting, the preferred term for the target audience it was always new professionals. You know, you could also call these people, or us, we are mostly new professionals. You could also uh, talk about young professionals, new generation, other terms are possible, but these other terms are mostly related to a certain age. And if you choose this term, it's more broad and open. So also people in their 40s and 50s that um, chose librarianship as their second or third career, they will be included in that kind of term. Um, then um, all of these groups had quite similar types of events going on for their, for their communities, mostly professional develops, uh, development events, like um, how can I do, how can I pimp uh, my CV, how can I do a good job interview, these kinds of things. And um, what I also um, found out was that um, there is a substantial use of social media that all of these groups um, do to uh, reach out to their community. So it's no, no surprise actually, because I think you all um, use social media quite a lot in your professional life and in your um, private life. So it's what they are doing as well. But the most uh, part of the um, practices, challenges, solutions were quite individual actually. Um, 
we can just take a brief look at the bigger picture here um, because, um, well, I could list uh, a lot of these individual uh, things right now, but it wouldn't make much sense. So I try to um, see or, or, or come up with a certain structure that could help other people that are thinking about building a new professionals group or that are in the same position. There are, I think, four different dimensions that are very important here and you could um, locate all of these groups somewhere on these dimensions of poles. The first one would be the level of structure that is very important. Um, as I've talked to you, um, told you, you might have um, no structure at all in your group. There might be some officer positions. Um, the size also varies very, very much from country to country. Um, then the effects of online and on-site um, because if you think about outreach to your community, um, events that you are organizing, or um, the presence at library and associations meeting, um, if you are doing all of that online, um, it's very easy for everyone to take part because you don't have to move and you can do that from a home desk like Veronica has just done it here. Um, but then maybe the boundary between the people won't be that good um, because you don't know each other in person. On the other side, um, on-site events are very nice because you get in touch with people, you get to know each other, you maybe make some new friends, and this lasts longer, uh, possibly. On the other side, not everyone can join these on-site events, so this is a very important um, dimension, I think, for the professional groups. The third one, a more strategic one, is the direction of activities. So if you um, organize stuff as a new professional's community or network, um, it's important to think about um, where are we going to go with this um, and how are we going to do this. So, um, for example, there were some groups that were national, but they also had some kind of international scope. Um, the world is coming very close um, uh, to each other. It's very easy to connect um, uh, between countries uh, nowadays. So, maybe as a national group, you want to take part in some international event, or you even want to. Um, cooperate with another uh, group, with an international group, to do some national stuff in your country. Also, um, you might think about, um, should I want to have this event organized only by myself? Then you probably have a little more freedom about the topic and the way you do it, but then you also have to do everything uh, for yourself. So you have to find money and do all the organizing things. Um, on the other side, um, maybe a little easier, the organizing part, if you team up with other groups um, or parts of your library association because um, then there will be shared efforts regarding marketing, sponsorship and so on. Um, but you might not be able to um, choose what you want to do exactly because there are other players for the same event. And um, to sum these things up, um, I think um, there's a major thing underlying here it's short-term activism versus long-term goals. Um, because if you start with a group of people that you know, um, some friends uh, that you made at Bobcats, for example, and you build a new new professionals group, then it's very much about um, the now and the here um, and what do you want to do. It's, it's yeah, short-term activism, as I call it. But you might not think about the long-term goals of your group or your community at that point. Um, this happens. Um, usually um, after one or two, three years, when maybe the first people of your initial group start to quit, and then you have to think about who will do this um, network, or who will take care of this network after me, and then it's about um, succession planning and um, passing on knowledge, and the earlier you think um, about that as well, the easier it gets as a group of new professionals to be successful to, to survive in the long term. And this also represents um, the two major uh, images that uh, are in the title of our workshop, um, tailor-made, because every country is different and you have to really see what are the conditions, what are the needs of the people in that country, and then you build a new professionals group around that. And um, weatherproof, because of the long-term sustainability, um, which I just told you about. So it's important to make the group in such a manner that it can yeah, survive over a longer term and involve every new professional that will arrive over the years. So um, this was just some practical input for you um, after the theoretical input <coughs> from Veronica. And, uh, well, I think we can go on with the
workshop part, with the creative part right now. Uh, because um, we want you to think a little bit about uh, what we've told you and um, do some creative exercise. And uh, we are going to split you up in uh, five different groups um, in a minute. And here's the question that you should uh, think about and talk about. It's how might you design communication in a national new professionals group? Um, that's the main question. We are going to have different groups and um, we want each group to approach this with a different thinking. Some of you should uh, think about the ideal solution for this, like how should it be, what do you dream of? Then we want uh, some groups to think very negative about that and to um, ask yourself uh, what, how shouldn't it be, like uh, what, uh, what I would dislike and what wouldn't work for me. And then um, some of you should um, go the crazy way and uh, think about it with um, unrealistic assumptions and no limitations, so getting really creative. And um, regarding the procedure, um, here are some little steps for you so it gets a little easier to work on that task. Um, you won't have much time to think about that, uh, but it, it makes it easier, I think. So the brain, brainstorming should be 20 minutes. Um, Collect some ideas. Um, we have uh, flip charts over there. You can uh, write down some things. And then after five minutes, you should um, talk about what you found out so far and um, decide for one of these ideas, like consensus. What is the best idea, what everyone wants. And then in the last 10 minutes, uh, we want you to get visual and to um, use these flip charts and to draw um, what you found out or to do anything that you like that is visual. You could also come up with a role play or something like that. Um, but it's, it's all in your hands. All right, I think, um, and then the presentation part, and every group, group should after that um, talk a little bit about what they have been doing, but very shortly. So I think we just can, I can just go through the room and